Hello, my name is Gina Esco and I am WPO's Social Science Program Manager. And today I'm going to go over the history of the Social Science Program and how we got to where we are today. Throughout this presentation, you will see several QR codes. You can scan them with your phone to find additional information. These additional materials can also be found on the WPO Program Review webpage. According to the NOAA Science Advisory Board, social science is a process of describing, explaining, and predicting human behavior and institutional structures in interaction with their environments. Since 2017, the social science program has focused on finding, funding, and fostering social science weather research to advance science and stewardship to save lives, protect property, and enhance the national economy. Since 2017, demand for social science has increased dramatically, as evident through policies and strategic documents, beginning with the Weather Act. A number of pivotal reports and policies were published during this time, including the National Academies of Science Study, the Evidence Act, and the Priorities for Weather Research Report. Strategic plans published by NOAA have increasingly included and focused on social science during this time as well. All of these documents have increased the scope of what our program needs to address. A demand, while very exciting, has also exceeded our capacity. Our team has experienced rapid growth to try to address and meet this demand. We started with one postdoc associate in fiscal year 17 and quickly we've grown over the last five years. Now in fiscal year 23, we are excited to share with you that our team consists of two federal employees and three contractors who each act as leads and co-leads for various initiatives, which we will highlight during this presentation. In our short history, Social science and WPO has really grown from what was originally an initiative to a formal program. As noted with our previous slides, we started with a modest amount of funding to support staff with additional project funds coming from the director's discretionary fund. In addition, we secured supplemental funding in fiscal year 18 and 22, which funded multiple year projects, which will be discussed later on. I personally started as a federal employee and the social science program manager in the second half of fiscal year 19. This marked the establishment of the social science program. In fiscal year 20, there was a monumental change. Our then acting director, Dr. Candace Boyd, decided to fund the program in response to the increasing demand and in light of our 2019 workshop findings. This budget change enabled us to, to fund extramural R&D in support of our three strategic focus areas, which we developed at the 2019 workshop. We would love to take you on a journey, uh, tell you a story of our journey, to describe these workshop findings that led to the development of these three focus areas. As noted, we hosted a social science research to operations workshop for the weather community across OAR, the weather service, and academia. The workshop revealed that NOAA needs to build infrastructure for social science data collection, management, and archival. NOAA's current organizational structure, and this makes sense, primarily supports the collection, management, and archival of physical science data. The challenge is without the similar infrastructure for social science, NOAA cannot measure mission critical factors such as impact and change. The workshop also identified a growing need to streamline R2O transition processes. It also exemplified how to successfully transfer knowledge within the social science community. We need to do more in relation to knowledge transfer. These findings laid the groundwork, the very foundation of our program's three focus areas, which are social science data and research, social science research to applications, and portfolio analysis and evaluation. The first on social science data and research funds and fosters collaborative research activities that develop and test methodologies that systematically collect data as well as identify research gaps. The second focus area is on social science research to applications such as operationalization or commercialization, also known as R2X. The goal of this focus area is to facilitate the potential transition of interdisciplinary and applied social science data and findings into a variety of applications across NOAA uh, and across the weather enterprise. Lastly, the portfolio analysis and evaluation theme, one of our newer focus areas, 
uh, it focuses on evaluating the social science program's evolving R&D portfolio and measuring its impact on society to support strategic thinking and decision making. I am really excited to share some of our major activities under each of these areas. Under the social science data and research team, data, I'm going to say data a lot, data plays a fundamental role. Data is needed to measure impact, change, and to value our NOAA's value of products and services. To advance this effort, in fiscal year 21, we partnered with the Natural Hazard Center at the University of Colorado Boulder through the National Science Foundation to create what we call Weather Ready Research Quick Response Program. This program enables us to collect data after weather events, as well as require publication of data and their associated instruments. For context, the Natural Hazard Center is the National Science Foundation designated information clearinghouse for the nation for societal dimensions of disasters. Since the mid 1980s, the Natural Hazard Center has administered the Quick Response Research Grant Program. It is the sole academic center in the nation with the research and administrative infrastructure that's important and the trust and recognition to support our Weather Ready Research Initiative. To date, we've funded 26 projects, published 17 data sets and 16 associated instruments across a variety of weather hazards, leading to 237 unique data and instrument downloads. This effort is really advancing and increasing the number of accessible data sets to help with evaluation, as well as laying the groundwork to meet open science guidelines. In addition to event-based data, we've also invested in collecting baseline and longitudinal data. That is data collected over time from the same population. In partnership with the University of Oklahoma Institute for Public Policy Research and Analysis, we funded the development of surveys that collect this longitudinal data from the public on forecast warning reception, comprehension, and protective actions. They've created an interactive website which allows users to access this data, including on risk perception for hazards such as severe, severe weather, tropical, winter weather, and floods. Combined with the quick response data, we're building the foundational data needed to enable measurement of our mission critical factors, such as impact and change on our society. Lastly, starting in fiscal year 21, the program hosted its first funding competition. This is a very exciting moment for us. We were uh, even more excited, I have a lot of excitement, uh, to receive 43 letters of intent and 30 full proposals. With that monumental budget change we referenced earlier, we were pleased to fund 10 two-year projects. Uh, these projects are still active and ongoing, so results are st you know, still coming in. Briefly looking ahead to our active, our current fiscal year 23 competition, we received a record, no record number, my boss and accent coming out, record number of 57 letters of intent and anticipate funding around seven projects. Our research priorities for these competitions are developed alongside and in partnership with the National Weather Service and are really focused on developing and transitioning methodologies, collecting and sharing data, and providing research guided recommendations on product and service improvements, which leads to our next very important focus area, transitioning research to applications. After receiving feedback from the community at the 2019 workshop, our program set our sights on optimizing the R2X transition process by making it more collaborative, iterative, and agile to reduce burden on both researchers and operational collaborators. To create a sense of community and really foster collaboration, we developed a smart sheet portal that acts as a virtual space and centralized hub of R2X information. Our program improved R2X processes by streamlining the transition plan development process by taking a human centered approach. Our team philosophy is that transition plans are byproducts of fruitful collaborations. As such, we focus on building trusted relationships first and then turn our attention to the transition plan itself. Last year, we tested this new R2X process, including drafting us, including us drafting a transition plan for PIs and POCs to respond to, and we received extremely positive feedback. In addition to the R2X practices we have in place, we also look to actively transfer knowledge from these projects for use by operational meteorologists, the physical science research community, and more. To that end, we developed an internal Google site called the Social Science Insight 
to increase, increase the accessibility and visibility of social science research. The website includes social science webinars and trainings, and it also increases access to social science journal articles. We've also written R2X value stories to help illustrate the impact social science has had on NOAA policies, processes, and products. Our fiscal year 18 hurricane supplemental projects are an excellent example of how we implement our knowledge transfer efforts. WPO has worked alongside the Weather Service to identify operational challenges and research gaps. And we did this to fund four complementary social science projects. This mindful approach built a collective body of research, enabling each of the four projects findings to build on one another. Together, the projects provide more generalizable findings to inform meaningful changes to the tropical cyclone products and services suite. Our team has synthesized and translated these cross-cutting findings into actionable R2X recommendations for research, development, and operations. In doing so, our translation efforts showcase the value of social science for improving public hurricane risk communication and how social science can inform physical science R&D as well. Translation requires an understanding of both social and physical science research knowledge combined with operational capabilities. And I am just extraordinarily proud that our team is becoming absolute experts at this knowledge transfer process. Our last theme, portfolio analysis and evaluation, is the newest and to be honest, the least developed area of our program. We know measuring our own impact is important to gauge the efficacy of our activities. Well, we also knew we needed to build activities first over the last five years. Taking the hurricane supplemental example, you know, how do we know if our knowledge transfer efforts are making a difference? You now, we knew that we needed to fund the projects first and we needed to produce research findings and we need to translate those findings into recommendations. We also know we need to continue our partnership with the Weather Service to follow through on implementation. Well, now that we're nearing that stage, how do we measure the change in value from that implementation? Not only is our team asking questions related to impact, value, and efficacy of our activities, we are also sought as experts to determine the impact, value, and efficacy of NOAA weather-related initiatives as well, a daunting task. To answer these questions, we need both data, you've heard that from me very often, right? We need both data and infrastructure to determine our impact as the community reminded us, they pointed this out to us at the 2019 workshop. While our activities are making progress, it's simply not fast enough to keep up with the demand. And we, we acknowledge that. Uh, to that end, our team is focusing on achievable steps towards our analysis and evaluation. For example, Related to tracking our efforts on making the R2X process more agile and collaborative, we created a customer experience survey to measure just that. Did we make it more agile and collaborative? Our sample size is small, but the results are very promising. Related to broader questions of impact, value, and efficacy, we're leading a very large NOAA-wide initiative called the Societal Data Insights Initiative, which will advance a social science data and IT infrastructure to evaluate societal response right now to flooding products and services initially and will grow over time to other hazard domains. As you can see and as you heard, our three main focus areas represent extraordinarily meaningful work to understand how we can continue to save lives, protect property, and enhance the national economy within the weather context. Our data and research is needed to measure progress and identify societal challenges, our R2X activities address those challenges with the goal of making improvements. And our portfolio analysis and evaluation theme is there to measure the effectiveness of that change and influence our program's future activities. Our team is hardworking and dedicated. Oh gosh, are we so dedicated towards these goals? The truth is that the demand for our team has, and I think will always exceed our capacity and capabilities. We strongly believe, though, that these goals and associated activities are focusing on our most critical short-term needs, while also building the broader infrastructure needed for social science integration at a larger scale. Thank you so much for your time and for listening, and we very much look forward to your questions during the live Q&A. Thank you.